Okay, so when you guys, um, last week, you submitted low voltage systems for the project that we have, the apartment. Um, when you go work in the industry, you're gonna hear the, the term building automation system, building automation system. What they do is they take your security system, they take your HVAC equipment system, they take your lighting system, and they automate the whole process, and they bring them all into a one control area with multiple screens where you can look at your heating and cooling system real time you can look at your security system and cameras real time you can look at your lighting system real time not only monitor but you also initiate um, orders as in shutting things down closing things so that's when you're building automation system when you take your power system your lighting system and your your security system for example or your fire alarm system put them all build mesh them together and you can watch them in real time and initiate orders for them that's a big deal in every almost every um big building commercial industrial building have some type of building automation system at least at least to control the hvac equipment at least they have it definitely for their hvac equipment heating cooling because it's a big deal for now we're doing dwelling guys we'll talk about building automation system in the commercial for dwellings they have um, more and more homes um, are getting it because of the internet and all the stuff into so-called um, house automation systems where you can have um, you can have uh, your internet your security system your lighting system your uh, refrigerator if you would like to um, in real time you can sending you a message to your iPhone if you want to that that technology is available guys for commercial and is also available for industrial if you're willing to pay for it so you can um, you can interface your security system if you have any at home with your lighting system, turning it on and off, with your heating system, set your heating system uh, higher as you go home, lower when you are here. So all this te technology is there. So what we have, we have a couple of technologies I'm going to go over that, that allow you to do automation for a house. Does that make sense? So that's that's basically what we're going to be doing. I don't know how many of you guys heard of these. Um, I definitely have never wired them. Um, so how many of you guys have heard of um, X10 system? X10 system, anybody have heard of X10 system? Zigbee system and Z-Wave system. So these are different and inserted, in I don't know if I'm saying it right, in certain system. These are four systems that allow you to control your power and lighting systems. For example, I can plug a X10 device into my lights and I can control my program my lights to go on and off at a certain time. You get you guys can go right now buy all these wireless technology and control anything you want. As long as some of them are hard don't need to have wiring even. Uh, for example, I know for a fact um, my old house, I used to have, so if you have a, if you need a phone, take this, if you need a phone, I know everybody's is using cell phones now, but if you need a phone in your garage, cool, you don't need to wire a land phone. You don't want to need to wire a land phone all the way to your garage. There's technology where you can plug in a device in your house, plug, have, have you guys seen that? You plug in your phone into it, um, and plus plug it into an outlet and put a phone line into it. And then the other device is wireless, plug it into your garage and put a phone into it. So they are, they're talking to each other wireless. So the technology is is unreal, guys. So um, X10 technology, we'll talk about the, the X10 technology and ZigBee and Z-Wave. But I want you guys to understand all these are means of controlling mainly, mainly your lights and power, turning your... Um, uh, AC on and off if you want to, turning um, your lights on and off, turning certain loads in your house on and off at certain time. Okay, so understand the wireless. The wireless technology is a big deal, guys, as well as structured wiring. There are two ways of doing these. You either pull a Cat5 or a twisted pair and tie multiple equipments to talk to each other on these twisted pair. That's the old technology. Or you can make them talk to each other wireless. And a lot of them now are doing wireless. So we'll talk about these. So for example, all these technologies, these three technologies are wireless. Um, an X10 system is also almost wireless because they use um, they use a power line. Terminology that they use, 
we'll talk about the technology that use this for the hill for home so-called home automation it's not building automation it's home automation you're going to hear this one when we go in this to build an automation system um category rated cables category rated cables so when we say cat5 what what's cat5 what's cat5 e what's cat5 what cat6 do you guys know what cat5 cat cat uh, 5e i know what we use it for cat 5 is the, the most commonly used right now is right internet cable they call it we'll talk about these ones so these are the technology that we do um x10 technology believe it or not i don't know anybody have wired them i've seen them what you do with x10 technology is really interesting the concept of x x10 technology you can plug so if I want to control a light, right? If I want to control your laptop when I turn it on and off, okay? Well, it has a battery. Say a light right in front of you. I will plug in an X10 technology outlet. Plug it into one of these outlets. And then that will be sending a signal over the power lines. I think it's really cool because it sent the uh, X10 technology sent a signal over the power lines, the power wires into the controller and the controller vice versa they can talk to the controller over the power lines so you can turn it on and off program it at a certain time they don't use wireless they use the cable the cat the um 14 2 and 14 uh, um, 3 to communicate okay a little bit about technology guys look at how old this technology is in 1975 scotland where it's invented um simple lowest cost you don't you don't have to do wireless in it it's not wireless it's unique in that you can use that 14 2 and 14 3 and 12 2 and 12 3 over the line you can impose a signal to go talk to devices over the power lines that's really i think it's really cool uh carry web signal superimpose is the term that they, they use superimpose on the existing wire system what they do guys here's the signal Here's the uh, 60 hertz signal that you, that, that this is your power signal. This is my power signal. What they do inside the power signal on, on the number 14, they put a, um, a communication signal, which is a lot of frequency here into it. Okay, you guys see that? This is my 60 hertz, 60 hertz. And then they put a, a few kilohertz kilohertz signal on the same 14.2 this this line here is 14.2 or 14.3 that's equivalent guys to highway interstate interstate 494 you allow a truck to move through it semi that will be your power lines at 60 hertz and then you allow a signal to communicate to go through the highway and that highway is um the signal is running at 10 kilohertz for example that's how they do it. The same power lines. Utilities use them all the time, guys, when they communicate between electrical utilities. When they communicate between substations, they use the high the, um, transmission lines as means of communication. Means of communication. Okay, so that's basically it. Control components can be plugged into an existing receptacle. All what you have to do is plug it into an existing receptacle, and it will be talking to everything connected to the power lines through the power lines imposing a signal here's how your controller looks like you program your controller um, and you can talk this will be tied to the power system and then you can you can put any yeah I think you can put how many um, addresses you can put for that one 256 easily addressable different addresses things to do things to turn on and off you can do that one um the frequency a system uh, carrier with the frequency that they use guys for these i believe it's 120 kilohertz that's a frequency i want to remind you guys the frequency for the power signal is 60 hertz can you guys see how they can impose a signal of 120 kilohertz into a 60 hertz signal and they don't interfere with each other the in the com in the telecommunication industry guys in the power industry what decides if if we can tie things together or not is if they are the same voltage can i tie a 120 to 277 circuits together you short them in the telecommunication industry what the decisive factor is the frequency if you put a 120 kilohertz signal 
and another 120 hertz signal, they interfere with each other, right? So that's why they allocate the frequency ranges to different channels like TVs and, and uh, radios and all this good stuff. You have this frequency is yours, this frequency is yours. So everybody like 91.1 uh, uh, megahertz is public, I, I listen to it all the time, public radio, right? They give you 91, 91.1 is uh, megahertz is, is your public radio. Nobody can transmit at this signal because if you transmit, what's going to happen? Interference. You interfere with what they're doing. Same thing here. This signal is, is sending 120 over the power lines. It will not interfere with the power, and the power will not interfere with it because you're looking at two different signals. It's like two different voltages. Okay, just be aware of that one. Here's how the device looks like, guys. So this is your controller. That's what we do the, all the programming right in here. And then as you program it, it sends signal over the power lines, over the power lines to all these devices. So you can plug a light right in here, control the light on and off, dim, but not dim light, control the light, you have to have a dimmer to dim the light. All these are different ways of controlling devices. Um, so all what you have to do in order to talk to this technology is have a device rated for X10 technology that receive a signal over the power line, receive a signal over the power line. Um, so that's that's basically what this technology is. Any comments, guys? Any questions? 120 kilohertz. Um, I have a. I have to show you um, how they connect them in a second here. So let me just go a little bit into my um, connection. There's a big picture here. Okay. Come on, bud. All right, so let me go into, here we go. This is how they how they connect them, guys. They have modules. Here's my signal bridge. They have a signal bridge that's powered to a, um, a 20 amp circuit breaker, powered. Powered, can you guys see that? With a neutral. They also have a connector, a bridge, a module between every two phases. This is my 240 slash 120 volt system. And power. So you, they apply this bridge, that's your that's where your controller comes, and you have your modules. These modules start signaling signals, and these signals go on the power line. Can you guys see that? They move into the power line, wherever they are. So you're you're in, you're sending signals over the power line. Am I the only one who's excited about sending a signal over the power line? Do you guys think it's cool? You know, over number 14 wire, you send the a signal. And that signal will be received here at the end by an outlet. The outlet will have two signals. One of them is the power. And the other one, another signal, is, is going to be a control. Over the same wire. Or the, over the same 14. Over the same 14.2. Or 12.2. That signal will tell the device what to do. Turn it on, off, do whatever you want to do. So that's how they connect this, this signal. There's a disadvantage of this one guy's noise, so there's interference. Could noise, noise in the telecommunications interferes. So meaning you might send a signal, it get corrupted, and it wouldn't reach the destination. That's a big deal. You want to turn the light on, now it doesn't turn on because it got interference. Okay. The second one, which I think uh, it's really interesting, guys. Um, remember, there's a transformer coming here from the utility, and you are tied to this transformer. Right, that's a utility transformer. And guess where your neighbor also is taking power from the same transformer in your neighborhood, right? And here's your here's your here's your neighbor. Neighbor is here. So what happened is guys, if you have if your neighbor has a same technology, the signal could go between neighbors. Is that bad news? So your neighbor can turn your light on and off. <laughs> that's a bad news. So what they do is they have a bridge here. They have a filter that they can filter the signal, does not allow the signal to go beyond your house. Any comments, guys, any questions? So they filter, they wouldn't allow the, fil the, the signal to go. So your signal would not go this way. Your signal will not this way, it will go inside the house. Am I making sense? Any comments, any questions, guys, about the signal, allowing the signal to go through your house, not to your neighbor's house? Because you don't want to control his light. So that's what the technology is. The unique thing about this technology is using the power lines. Um, PLC, 
power line. The utilities, guys, use a term similar to this. They call it PLC. What does a PLC stand for? Adam, do you remember the PLC that you guys got with us? Programmable Logic Controller. That's for you. What does a PLC mean for the electrical utilities? There's another term for PLC. They call it power line carrier. Power line carrier. So the same concept. They carry a signal on a power line. Okay. So that's this technology. That's your technology. Any comments, guys, about this technology? Any comments, any questions about this technology? So what's the disadvantage of this technology? The uh, X10, um, it could interfere with your neighbors, and there's noise, and there's limitation how much you can do and how many data that you can transfer over this technology. How many data? I think it's 10 kilobyte uh, per second. 10 kilobyte per second is nothing. You can transfer. Okay. Now the next step, guys, is to go so-called Zigbee, Zigbee technology. These are wireless communication. Wireless. Oops. These are your wireless communication technology. Um, every time you guys have wireless devices, you have to have a sender and receiver, of course, be able to receive it. So this one is. I want to remind you, it's a wireless. It does not need wires. Communication system that use low power radio frequency. Low power radio frequency. Um, okay, so wireless personnel that it's like you aim at your network. Use three different types of devices. You need a coordinator, a router, and an end device user. So um, it's like. You would have a controller sitting in there. You program your controller. You have multiple devices that can talk to this controller and receive signals from this control to, controller to do certain things, as in dimming your light, turning your microwave on and off. Um, so it's a wireless technology. Any comments? So it doesn't use the power lines to send the signal. It sends the signal wirelessly. So a few things about this technology. And I've not installed it, guys. There's a you can go up to 2.4. It looks like gigahertz on these. 119 megahertz. These are the frequencies that they use. Um, multiple things that you can do out of. Okay, here's another technology. A third technology is called Z-Wave. Again, these are all. You guys have a receiver. You plug your receiver somewhere in your house. You have send, uh, a sender or a controller. Plug it somewhere in your house, and a receiver anywhere. And you plug everything in these receivers and you program to turn the light on and off them or, or what's not. Um, Z-Wave, again, another low power wireless communication system. Um, there is a range for the range. All of these, every time you have wireless technology, guys, they have a range. You get into the wireless business. There's a lot of regulations. You can't just start interfering with the telecommunication and radio frequency that the police officer are using. And I mean, there's a lot of regulation when it comes to wireless communication. So when they allow these technologies to happen, they limit them with distance. So there's limitation on how far they can, these can go. Because are you interested in controlling anything other than things in your house for this technology? These are meant to control things in the house, not meant to send a signal to control a, a, a piece of equipment in St. Cloud. You know, so that's why they have limitation on how far they can go. Plug in, so same thing, controller, you plug in your devices, you talk to them, and uh, does not talk to um, extend devices. They don't, they are not compatible. They don't talk to each other, two different technologies. Okay, the frequency that they use, if you care, it's uh, 868.42 megahertz. That's the frequency that they use to talk to each other. Okay, so these are all wireless, mind it. Another technology that you can use, guys, use both. This guy can use wireless or can hardwire this technology. Um, they can talk to the devices on X10 devices. Why do they care about X10 devices? Talk? Because X10 is the, the oldest technology. So if you have it in your house you, and you need a new technology, are they compatible? It's a big deal. So that's an advantage that's compatible with the existing one. You can do a lot of things with these, like anything else, guys. You can turn things on and off, your lights, turn them or dimming them, um, security system sensors, alarms, heating, cooling, humidity, door locking, control of appliances, 
So you can um, you can literally control every single thing if you so decided in your house. You can uh, turn your thermostat lower when you're here, higher in the winter when you go home, just half an hour before you go home. You can, um, if you leave food in your microwave, you can turn your microwave on to cook your food for you. Um, so you can, uh, humidity and, and cooling system is a big, big deal. Lighting is a big deal with a control. Most of the stuff that we, we like to control, guys, in an automation system, really the most important thing is heating, cooling, and lighting. These are major loads. When you have building automation system, almost every building have some means of controlling their heating, cooling, monitoring, and controlling their heating, cooling, and a lighting system. Um, then everything else, then they add the security. If you have security interface with it and fire alarm, so you can talk and see what's going on in your fire alarm system. Any comments, guys, about... Um, this technology, another technology that you can use to have uh, home automation. This baby, if you're using it wireless, it uses 131.65 kilohertz. Okay, so these are, um, so everything that we said, guys, are wireless or using the power line so far. And then you, you, then we can use uh, so-called structural residential wiring systems. That's when you use Cat5 to wire your house to a controller and you can pull all this information through a cat5 you know that's what they do guys for most of all these uh, uh, building automation system they take uh, a similar a twisted pair to the air handling unit or a cat5 they take a cat5 to the lighting control panel they can take a cat5 or similar to your security panel they bring them all to one big controller and then they, with a the program they start pulling information from them and sending information to them so now you're getting into a complete local area network. You're networking the whole house, networking the whole house. So if your refrigerator has a Cat5 connection, guys, you just put Cat5 in your in your refrigerator. You can pull all the but it has to be, and a lot of equipments can be, guys, have a controller with them. So from that Cat5, you can pull the temperature in your refrigerator. You can pull whatever information important in that refrigerator. Um, okay, so. As long as you pull it as a, a signal in a CAT5, you can interface it with the software. You can see it right on your screen. So that's your structure wiring, so-called. Um, combination outlets. For these, you need a combination outlets and central distribution system. You guys with your friend Chad, um, you have a hub like this one. You bring your all your CAT5 to this hub. There's a programming that you have to do into these hubs and then now everything that you want to put in the network will be accessible for people who have access to this network. it becomes network i mean then you put it you interface it with uh with the internet and now you can access it from anywhere else in the world wired or wireless wired or wireless any common comments any questions about structured wiring the structured wiring that you guys did with your friend chad is we have cat5 we have data outlets and phone outlets that I would like you guys to do, wire it. Um, so my expectation was is to pull all this information for CAT, uh, CAT5 and twisted pair and coaxial and, and security panel. All these guys system that you did for the apartment building, you put them in one low voltage, low voltage, cabinet low voltage cabinet you put them in a low voltage cabinet any comments any questions about structural wiring you have your security system wired your cat5 wired um your um coaxial cable of course wired uh what else um t telephone lines is wired and all these can be interface guys and then they can talk to each other into put them in a cabinet and if you want them to interface then you can interface them as when they say interface, as in talking to each other. You don't have to have your security system talking to your internet or your phone line, though you can. Most of security panels guys have a line where you can put the phone, put a phone line on it so they can dial you if somebody is to break into your house or dial the company that protects, uh, that monitors your security system. Okay, here's what service center, they call it service center looks like guys. A hub for structural wiring. Um, with telecommunication, look what you can put here. You can put your telecommunication, that's phones, the audio, your video, 
and home automation control system, as well as controller installation. So you can you can have your phone, data, um, internet, as well as your automation controlling your equipment right into a controller like this. Um, and 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 a lot of them, guys, right now you can access it from your smartphone. You can. I want to see what's happening to my refrigerator today because I miss her, right? And you can dial and you see what's going to happen in your refrigerator. I want to see what the temperature of my house today. You dial and you can get see what the temperature in your house. So if you want to, um, you were laughing at these because homes we care a lot less. There's a lot of guys, um, you know, Egan and all these companies, uh, they, they monitor churches and buildings remotely. Do you really, in the middle of winter in Minnesota, do you want your heating system to fail in a church or in a building so if all the water will freeze and major damage will happen to your building? Do you want that to happen? Nobody's there at night. So the, all these systems guys are, real, are wired, interfaced, monitored remotely by people so they can monitor. So literally over a weekend, if the monitor, if the temperature in that church or in that building goes below a certain threshold, you will get you will get a message on your cell phone or whoever in charge to go check on the heating system in this building fails. So you can uh, you can act before you freeze the water into that building and make a major major damage. So it makes a lot of sense, guys, in, a, uh, in um, when you're dealing with a commercial building. If you have a cabin. That people are using this technology for cabins, guys. You have a cabin up north, and you go over the weekend, and you have heating in your cabin. Now, what, who's going to monitor your cabin when you're here? Your cabin is uh, 250 miles away or 300 uh, miles away from here. What they do, they have this technology and then available where you can have uh, remote um, thermostats. It send the signal, typically through um, phone lines, into your iPhone. <laughs> And it will tell you that your thermostat has failed. Your temperature has reached, say you want to set it up at uh, 65. If the temperature reaches 50, immediately it will send you a signal that say, hey, something is wrong in your, uh, in your thermostat. Same thing if somebody break into it. If you have a security system, it will send you a signal somebody has broken into your cabin. So the technology, I want you to know the technology is there. Any comments, any questions? Any comments, guys, any questions? So that's what your structured wiring. Um, cable types and installation recommendation. There's a lot of standards when it comes to communication cables, guys. Installing communication cable. Chapter 890C code book has tons of information. Um, optical fiber cables have UL standards. So there's a lot of standards that tells you what to do things. The most common denominator between all these structured wiring, very simple. Structural wiring shall be completely isolated from power and lighting. So you can't put them in the same conduit, same hole, same box, unless you divide them. That's really, and the idea for this guy is of interference. You do not want to impose signal on the phone lines, number one, and safety, interference and safety. So you separate these, all these structured wiring as in, in, in communication from the power. Um, so there's a lot of now, all these guys, audio, video, and data cables, I can, through my coaxial cable that comes to my house, I can get my phone, I can get my TV, and as well as my internet. So you can get this one, guys, through a phone line, you can get it through a coaxial cable, or you can get this service right now through uh, fiber optics. Anybody has a fiber optic coming to his house or her house, and you can get all these signals from all these signals. So you really no longer like it used to be where you have to have for audio, you have to have the phone line for video, for Excel cable, and then the data can be tagged from the um, for Excel cable or from the phone line. You can get all of them together from, uh, from one means. With the digital guys, all what you're looking right now to send to receive a signal is just a signal line, like a highway. And you can impose any signal in these highways. I always describe the telecommunications like interstates. Can you, you can, any, anyone can drive a car or a motorcycle or semi or a truck into the interstates. Think of each one of these as a signal. One of them, the semi will be my TV signal, my video audio signal. My phone signal would be, see, a car. Um, I need my internet will be a truck. Does that make sense? All of them using the same highway though. 
Why would you be able to put all these signals in the same highway? Because they run them at different frequencies. Um, digitally, different frequencies modulated differently. So as long as you keep the distance, when you are in the highway 494 driving, as long as you keep a safe distance between you and the truck in the front of you, you can run forever. And that's the same thing with these signals. And as long as they keep a threshold, a frequency threshold between them, don't jump here in the frequency wise. Don't push in front of the one in front of you. Otherwise you crash. What is a crash into the communication? Crash interferes. That's exactly like a highways. You don't, so you leave the threshold, the distance between you and the car in front of you. That's the frequency threshold that they keep. Don't, don't transmit at this frequency and we're happy. Okay, so there any comments, guys, any questions about these? Comments, questions about telecommunication? There's a lot of cables that you can do from coaxial into cap five into, my understanding, I'm not an expert, again, of, of telecommunication right now, there is nothing you cannot solve uh, with cat, uh, without a cat five. I mean, there's, so for example, can I use a cat five for my security system? Bring it on. Can I use my CAT5 for telecommunication between my uh, my um, devices? Bring it on. Um, internet, bring it on. Phone, bring it on. So CAT5, if you don't know and you want to talk to a piece of equipment, just say CAT5. CAT5 gives you eight 24 conductors. It's like, eight. think of it as eight lanes in a highway. Can you guys, when you say CAT5, think of it as eight, eight conductors means eight lanes. What does eight lanes mean in a highway? Speed. <laughs> Get you tons of speed, room. More signals and faster. They can run fast. Exactly the same thing when you say cat five. When you say twisted pair, twisted pair, you're looking at two lane highway. That's what a twisted pair. Now with two lane highway is like eight lane highway. With that, see in terms of speed that you can send. That's how you look at all these um, telecommunication wires. So there's a lot of them, a lot of combination and so forth. A few things, guys, you need to be aware in terms of technology and terminology that they use with them. Uh, they use RJ. RJ is the most common. This is the registered jack, guys, RJ for the phones and the data. Um, RG is radio grade terminology that use aft connectors, connectors for coaxial cable, they call them aft connectors. Mega, giga, um, and kilo mega giga kilo are used with two things they're used with the frequency to decide what frequency are you sending at so when you say is 90 like uh, we talk about 91.1 uh, mega hertz you guys probably don't listen to public radio do you minnesota public radio <laughs> any frequency what radio do you listen to which frequency do they run 100.3, here's 100, 100.3 megahertz. So those guys, those are running at different frequencies. If you run, if broadcast at different frequencies, if those guys to use this frequency, they will interface, they will, they will, um, um, they will kill each other's signals, right? That's why that, so these are two cars running in the sky, is imagine running in the highway at, and, and, le and maintaining a space between them. That's how they run them over the, um, you know, in the air, run all these frequencies in the air. Okay, so gigahertz is a big deal. So mega, kilo, mega, giga, the higher the frequency, the more powerful the signal is. That's how they, they, they come. I believe when you do satellites, they start doing gigahertz, shoot the signal, more frequency, more muscles to the signal. What does more muscles mean for frequency wise? Longer distances, I can shoot longer distances. Um, the federal government regulate this, all this, guys. It's not up to you to grab a transmitter and start sending any signal you want. There's a lot of regulations. Um, okay, hertz, obviously, that's how we measure the frequency. The notorious, the famous frequency that we have is 60 hertz. We, in the power industry, use 60 hertz. Look, look, can you please compare the 60 hertz that we use into, into uh, 91.1 megahertz? See how much how bigger the frequency was because this is we're not interested in sending information with this six with the 60 hertz what are we sending? we're sending power we're not interested in sending information right when you when you get a 60 hertz to your computer 
uh, to power your computer, are you getting signal out of it? You're getting power, juice, okay? Um, they run um, 400 hertz. They run 400 hertz equipment. Their equipment that run power-wise at 400 hertz. Okay. So this is byte per, bytes per second. Um, Derek, do you have an internet? Do you know what your speed is? Is it 10 megabytes per second? So right now, a lot of them, they can get you 10 all the way to 40 megabyte per second, um, megabyte per second. So that's 10 to 40 megabyte per second. Now that tells you, you go 40 megabyte per second, now you can watch movies on the internet, download immediately. Um, so the higher the megabyte, the wider the interstate highway that you're sending the signal in, does that make sense? The more you can fast, you can, the worst thing in, in the internet guys is watching movies because it takes a lot of band, they call it bandwidth. You need room, you need more lanes for these signals to come to your house, right? And watch it instantly. So you go to 40 megabyte, you, you start downloading tons of tons of watching movies, which is the worst that you can do, right? Movies, because it takes a lot of bandwidth. Other than movies, you know, 10, 10 megabytes is good enough for browsing the internet and, and seeing things. Watching movies live, downloading and watching movies, is it takes a lot of bandwidth. So from 10 to, um, to 40 megabytes. Bytes is the how much, how much signals, how wide the interstates are. How wide now? Does the mind making sense how many lanes you have? The more bytes, the more lanes you have, the more you can send signals. Okay, so GB, just be aware of this one, guys. Megahertz, we talked about the megahertz. Um, that's the frequency that um, megahertz frequency, you can uh, do it. Bits, smallest unit of measurements, that's that zero and one. Remember that has a bit, zero, one in the binary when you guys did the PLCs with us. Um, you have the byte, the amount of data required to describe a single character, a byte. Um, and megabyte per second is the speed. The megabyte per second is the speed of transmission of signals. The only thing you need to know, Adam, is the higher the megabyte, the best the transmission signal is. As we all know, right? More data. I can watch real life movies. Um, so that's what you need to do from the byte into, um, into the megabyte per seconds. How many uh, information you can send per second through this. Now, the largest, uh, the best means of telecommunication, guys, right now is uh, fiber optics. You bring a fiber optic to your house. Now you have um, 40 megabyte per seconds. Life, man, you, you are having a 490. You have an interstate with eight lanes coming to your house instead of an alley of information. Does that, am I making sense, guys, in terms of information? How this is so important? Um, Okay, talked about wireless. Structural wiring involves separate conductors. If you were to do structured wiring, not the wireless, structured wiring, guys, separate conductors, most of them, uh, the only one that are aware of is extent technology is the one that use the existing wires. Um, both wireless and wired technologies can, can monitor and control devices. So either use a CAT5 to monitor, or you can have... Um, you can have a wireless, like at my house, I, ha I have a wireless um, um, ethernet and then transmit through the whole house like a lot of you guys have and you can receive the signal and do a lot of stuff, a lot of damage with it. Um, if you're using, the, there's a technology guys, the infrared technology, this is the um, is a heat of wireless, the heart of wireless technology devices, the infrared, you have to be in line of sight like the computer um yeah, i mean that your remote controls and so forth when you if it's infrared you have to have line of sight um sending receivers might be lines line of sight infrared signs can be bounced off shiny surfaces so the infrared technology typically they use it for remote controls like your tv you point it at the tv and you click if you point it somewhere else it wouldn't unless it bounced off something and hit the tv um that's just when you're in line of sight, you can use it. You, you can use these technologies. All these are frequencies, guys, that can do certain things. 
Any comments, any questions? Any comments about the building automation? Any questions? For the apartment building that we want to have, guys, please do me a favor. We're going to bring our coaxial cable and our phone line and our CAT, CAT uh, 5 um, or CAT 5E. We're going to bring them into one location. We're going to call it the low voltage uh, box and we wire them there. Now, interface them or not, a security panel is going to be there. Interface them or not is not a big deal, but we bring them in one centralized location. Okay, so that's that's it for this. I have um, an, another nice sheet about um, what I thought. Okay. Axial cables. There you go. So here's a lot of wires, guys. This is just different type of wires that you can use for um, oops, communication. Um, a combination of jacks that you can have. Phones, you guys are familiar with the with the phone jacks and, and internet jacks and telephone jacks. You can have a combination of them in one box. We talked about this controller. Different type of cables that you can use. They had five. They they sell them a twisted pair, guys. Here's your coaxial cable, cat five. You can see four four pair, four twisted pairs will get you a cat five. Um you can have a combo. Look at these guys. You can have one jacketed cables. They use this a lot for controlling of equipment. Look how many how many means of control coming. You have coaxial cable. You have cat cat five. You have two almost two coaxial cables. They use these with machines. If you're uh, if you have a manufacturing floor, what they do, guys, and you have all these machines, complicated machines that are doing certain things, you want to talk to them. So they might have a coaxial cable and CAT5 coming to them, one of them to control the machine, another one to pull information out of the machine. So just be aware that you can have cables jacketed. Can you guys see they're all jacketed together to do certain function? Um, so just be aware of uh, lift stations and wheel houses. You can have a power, you can have a power cable and a communication cable jacketed together going to the same pump. One will power the pump, the other one will pull information from it. So that when it comes to controlling machines and pulling information from it, you be aware that there's a lot of possibilities that you can do. I don't see an application for this in, um, in the residential. Okay, there's the categories for cables, guys. Category one, four pairs, non-twisted, an obsolete category, they call them four pairs, non-twisted. Uh, then category two, four pairs with slight twist to each pair. Okay for audio and low speed. Anybody here of category two anymore? They started with category one, category two, non-usable. Category three, data network up to 16 megahertz. Now remember, all of them are four pairs. Each, as the, as the category higher, they're having better conductors bigger conductors more data so look at this all of them are four pairs though but they make the material in the way they make them guys when they twist them no interference right they eliminate the interference and then they make them out of a better material these cables they make them faster they make the data move through them faster so this one is 16 megahertz if you go to category 4 20 megahertz a uh, more megahertz is what faster speed we're talking about speed um, look at the category five. That's the most common one. A hundred megahertz. They're made out of twenty-four. They are twenty-four copper conductors, solid. When you two, there are eight pairs, uh, four pairs, two pairs twisted together to make you eight lanes highway, eight lane highway, and then they are my friends. A gauge of twenty-four, and the speed that you can run there, it's 100 miles per hour. So like think of the 100 megahertz, like 100 miles per hour versus, do you want to drive down for 494 with 60 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour? Can you guys see the, the you know, the connotation of, of how important the, um, the speed is, speed information. Then there's 5E, the most common guys, look at 5E can get you all the way to 350 miles, miles per hour or megahertz. So it's like driving, instead of dry, allowing you to drive 100 miles an hour by the highway, now you're driving 350. You can push more data, right? So that's 5E is, is the most advanced now. There's also 5 um, category 6, which is um, not used. Um, four twisted pair data, 
up to 250. Um, so it's supposed to be um, interference, minimize the interference. So it has a, it's better than 5E, the, the bigger the category. And 5.7 can go as high as 750. And I believe not yet standardized at the time of publishing. It's not standardized category seven. So everything that we do right now is what? Category five E. A lot of if you go to the engineering firms when they specify category five E. But category seven is supposed to get you. How do they make them? They're all twisted pairs, guys. They make them out of more purer material that allows the data to go faster through these highways. If the data can't go faster, then you can put more megabyte per second coming to your house. Who cares? Speed 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 is a big deal then you can watch uh instantly what you download from the internet any comments guys any questions about these so what you need to remember for our project is five cat five or cat five e is what we'll be using so that's my um talked about these talk about these what's it pairs okay any comments guys any questions about that any comments any question about home automation systems this will transfer next time, um, Karen, into building automation. When we start doing commercial, we're going to do building automation. We're going to control the air handling unit, the chillers, and all this good stuff, and security system pulling it all together. Um, anybody has some type of uh, uh, home automation? At, I don't. At your house, do you have an, I mean, like where, where you can bring your security system and CAT and TV and everything else in one centralized location, monitor them? Uh, a lot of us have internet, of course. So you have wireless network internet, and um, where you can receive your audio, video, or data through. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Comments, questions? So be aware of that one. Okay, I want to give you guys uh, ten minutes, and I'm going to talk about generators. Topic, a really nice topic, uh, for one more hour, if you don't mind. So go, go stretch yourself, do what you have to do. Thank you. 